summer could be catastrophic for Ukraine. The New Yorker explained why. The Russian army is advancing into Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city, as summer approaches, a move that underscores how the two-year conflict has swung in Vladimir Putin's favor. At a minimum, this could force Ukraine to redirect its overstretched forces away from the Donbass, where Russia is waging a long-term offensive operation. This is stated in an interview with Dara Masikot, a senior fellow in the Russia and Eurasia program at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace for The New Yorker. The trend is bad for Ukrainian forces, and I think the situation will get worse before it gets better. The Russians are clearly giving priority to Donetsk in eastern Ukraine. They are putting a lot of effort on the ground with heavy use of glider bombs. This is very stressful for Ukrainian units there. The Ukrainians also have to divert units to strengthen them in the Kharkov area. So, although weapons are supplied to Ukraine under an additional bill, they do not arrive immediately and personnel issues remain unresolved in these units, the expert notes. According to her, Russia does not yet have enough strength to try to repeat the 2022 offensive. The Russians do not have the manpower or skills to attempt to occupy a city of this size. One in the Kharkov direction of the Russian Federation wants to break through and create what they call a sanitary zone. The worst case scenario for Kharkov is that the Russian Federation tries to devastate it by bombing it with missile strikes. At the same time, there is personnel issue in Ukraine. Some units are staffed at 30 to 40 percent. And when staffing levels are that low, it's very difficult to accomplish your mission. Reducing the conscription age from 27 to 25 does not bring in the required number of people. The expert adds that at the same time, Russia has a limited level of armored vehicles, in particular armored vehicles. They are not replenishing the equipment they brought into the war at the same pace. Consequently, they will burn through the functioning portion of their reserves within the next two years if they continue at this rate. If they burn through their strategic reserves, they'll have to consider putting the whole thing on pause until they can ramp up their new production quickly. However, to put Russia in this position, the level of losses must remain what it is today, which means that yes, Ukraine must continue to receive the additional assistance that it is receiving now. 40 Palestinians were killed in an overnight Israeli strike on a refugee camp in Rafah. The attack hit a camp for displaced people in northwest Rafah, a site that is in a designated humanitarian safe zone, Gaza Civil Defense and Palestinian Authority said. Women and children were among those killed. Several people were injured in the strike. We are facing difficulties reaching the wounded, civil defense workers said. In a statement, Hamas slammed the bombing as complete defiance and disregard for the decision of the International Court of Justice that demanded it to stop its aggression against Rafah. It also noted that Israel would not have committed without the U.S. support and green light, saying to hold the U.S. administration fully responsible for the deadly attack. The Israel Defense Forces said in a statement that, an Israel Defense Forces aircraft struck a Hamas compound in Rafah in which significant Hamas terrorists were operating. The strike was carried out against legitimate targets under international law using precise munitions and on the basis of precise intelligence that indicated Hamas' use of the area, it added. The Israeli airstrike came hours after Al-Qassam brigades, the Hamas armed wing, launched a large rocket barrage from Rafah towards the coastal city of Tel Aviv in central Israel for the first time in months. To be noted, the targeted area, which is crowded with thousands of displaced persons, was previously declared as a safe zone by the occupation.